Hey boys and girls, welcome back to another riveting set of math notes. I know you all missed it. Uh, if you hear a little bit of background noise, um, it's just raining. It's it's fine. I thought you guys could use some lo-fi atmosphere uh, listening to chill hip-hop beats in the rain with your math notes, you know? So you guys can go ahead and turn off your uh, lo-fi beats that you listen to in the background. I've already provided my own for you. Um, I really hope that they're going to help you understand how to find the roots of fourth degree polynomials today. Um, what you're going to need to know is how to factor and how to set stuff equal to z uh, how to spell the word zero. Okay, it's going to be super easy. You're not going to mind it hardly at all. Okay. All right, let's start with some vocabulary just to make sure you're up to speed on the words I'm saying. Um, a root is the x location where the graph crosses the x-axis. It's also the x value that makes the polynomials equal zero. Okay, this is a fancy way of saying if I graph a graph, why am I writing in blue but red is marked here? Curiouser and curiouser, my children. Anyway, it's these spots right there where the graph crosses the x-axis. Um, the root, we only really care about the x location though, so it'd be like x equals and then a number. Maybe a couple numbers, right? x equals uh, number 2, right? So we might have several, like 3 in this one. The other thing you're going to have to know is what a factor is. I'm going to say factor a bunch because you have to factor a bunch. It's almost like factoring is the most important thing you learn in algebra 2. But you're going to factor, which just means Sorry, it doesn't mean that. The verb factor, this is the noun factor. The noun factor is one of the lower degree polynomials that got multiplied to give you the final polynomial. So what that means is if you have something like y equals x squared plus 3x plus 2, you can factor this thing to x plus 2 times x plus 1. So we would say that these are factors of that thing. Okay, that's what a factor is. All right, we're only gonna have two example problems today because they're pretty easy and pretty straightforward. Um, if you have trouble with them, I bet I know a guy who's sitting in a WebEx meeting right now who just told you that you could ask him for help. He's probably sitting there, I bet his webcam's on. I bet you could even unmute yourself and say, hey, Mr. Barton, I need some help. Just a thought. So what we want to do is we want to find all the roots, and all is important here because that means we don't get the chicken out and avoid the imaginary roots. We want to find all the roots of this polynomial. The first thing you need to know is the fundamental theorem of algebra. Fun, I'm not going to try and spell that. Fundamental theorem of algebra. Okay, what that says is that whatever that biggest exponent is, there's that many roots. So because we have a 4 here, we are expecting 4 answers for this problem. Okay, I know a certain JoJo reference uh, would be super mad right now. You know what I mean? Or maybe you guys haven't gotten that far yet. I won't spoil it for you. Okay, so the way we're going to find these 4 roots for this polynomial is we're going to factor it. And I know you all love factoring because it's all you ever did in Algebra 2. So you're going to say, but Mr. Barton, there's a 4 here. I don't know how to factor that. You've got to teach me. It's a good thing I get paid almost nothing at all to do just that, children. So what we're going to do is we're going to factor this thing. And we're going to use uh, what I call simple factoring. Um, some people call it factoring by examination. Because literally all you do is you stare at it until you know what the answer is. The way you should be trying to find that answer, though, is we want two numbers that are going to multiply to give us this last one, and they have to add to give us the middle number, okay? So the way I like to try and factor this in case you don't already know what it is, and I know, I know, I'm talking to an honors class, so right now you're all screaming at your uh, whatever you're staring at and telling me the answer, and it's just killing you that you can't interrupt me and tell me the answer, and you have to just sit there and wait to tell me the answer. But here's how we find the answer. So you're going to take this number, and we're going to look at some factors of it, and we're going to try and find two factors that I can add together to get that number. So factors of 36 are 
1 and 36, obviously, right? 2 and 18, also obvious. 3 and 12, 4 and something, 4 and 9. Okay. Um, and then 6 and 6. Okay. So we want two of, of these sets, of, or sorry, we want one set of these two numbers, these pairs, so they will add up or subtract down to negative 5. So these two numbers are way too far apart, right? 1 minus 36, that's negative 35, too far apart. Uh, 18 minus 2, that's uh, 16, too far apart. 12 minus 3, too far apart. 9 minus 4 is 5. Aha! We got the right number with the signs backwards. So that means just put the, uh, the smaller number as positive. So 4 minus 9, negative 5. What that means is that we can factor this using these two numbers. This is going to factor to x squared plus 4 and x squared minus 9. And you're going to say, Mr. Barton, where do these x squared come from? It's because if I foil this thing back together or I multiply it back together, this first term times this first term have to give me that. So x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. Trust me, if you multiply this thing back together, you'll get this. These are x squareds because this thing's an x squared, basically, is what you need to know. They're all like this on your homework, so don't trip. Okay, now that we factor this, you're almost there. We're ready to go get these four roots. The way you get these four roots is you take these two factors and set them equal to zero and solve for x. So we're going to do just that. So x squared plus 4 equals 0, and x squared minus 9 equals 0. All right, we need to solve these, so we just need to get the x by itself. So here, I'm going to subtract 4 on both sides. Those 4s cancel. Bring down our x squared. Equals 0 minus 4 is negative 4. Now to get rid of a square root, we do the inverse operation, which is, did I say square root? I gave it away, didn't I? To get rid of the squared, we have to do the inverse operation, which is a square root. And now I know, I know, I know. We're not allowed to take the square root of a negative number. It's a good thing you're in pre-cal and we are now. So we get the square root cancels squared. X equals, ignore the negative for a second. Square root of 4 is 2. All this negative inside the square root does is it comes out of the square root and turns into an I. So this is 2I. And now, I know, I know, I know, you're in honor, so you're screaming at your screen right now, Mr. Barton, you forgot one! I know. Whenever we take a square root, whenever we do the square root to cancel a squared, you get two answers. Right? You get the positive and the negative. And that's just because 2i squared and negative 2i squared are both negative 4. Try it. All right, believe me. Okay. And then let's finish this off. So my uh, plus 9, excuse me, plus 9 on both sides to move the 9 over. So we have x squared equals 9. Take a square root of both sides. Square root of 9 is 3. Whoops, Please. sorry, I've got bad handwriting. And negative 3. And there you go. That's the end of the problem. Those are your four roots. And now I know you're saying, Mr. Barton, that's too fast, which is why you can pause and go back and rewind and watch again. Or I have a second example for you. This one's a little bit harder. We get a little bit uglier answer, but that's going to be okay. So once more for the people in the back, first step here is remember that it's y equals, but whatever. It's not super duper important. We're going to do the same thing. Step one, factor. So we're going to factor these using simple factoring. This could be y equals two binomials. They're both going to have x squareds in them because we're dealing with x squared and x to the fourth. All right, we need two numbers that add up to four, sorry, multiply to negative 49 and add or subtract to give us eight. So we could do, let's go look at our factors of 48. But Mr. Barton, I already know. Well, listen, kid, I'm not as smart as you. you got to deal with having a slow math teacher. I've got to do that the slow way because I'm not as smart as you. Okay, so 48. There's 1 and 48. 
There's two, 24. Uh, does three go into that? I bet it does. Uh, three, I'm gonna put it down, I'm gonna commit to it. I think it does. Um, I know, I know, you're screaming at me, aren't you? And 16? Yeah, 16. Okay, four and 12. Oh, four and 12 are eight apart. I bet you I can make an eight with these. We'll do positive 12 minus four. There we go. So 12 times negative four is negative 48. Check mark, that one checks out. 12 minus four is positive eight. That one works too. Perfect, so we have our factors. Now we take our two factors, set them equal to zero and solve for x. So x squared minus four equals zero. All right, step one of solving for x, subtract 12 on both sides, these cancel. x squared equals negative 12. Now, to get rid of the squared, we have to take a square root on both sides. All right, x equals, the square root of 12, the way you do this is you type in your calculator and it'll do it for you. Or you can try and factor this. This is four and three, and then four is two and two. So because we have a pair of twos, they can come out of the radical. So this could be two. This three has to stay inside the radical because we don't have another one to take the square root of. So it's two radical three. And then because there's this negative here, I. Um, I actually think a lot of people put the I in there, but we'll put it at the end. I, I think it makes sense at the end. And of course, because we took a square root, you also get the negative of this, negative two radical three i. The important thing is make sure the i is not inside the radical. All right, then we have to do the second half. We have to solve this equation. So we're gonna add four on both sides. So we get x squared equals four, take a square root on both sides x equals 2 and x equals negative 2. And then these are your four roots. All right. I know that was a little quick, but I got some complaints that you guys didn't like me meandering around and showing you cool math. So I tried to keep it straight to the point. If you guys have questions, let me know. I'll try and help you out. All right. See ya.